Audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. Jesus said, if you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. A zookeeper heard a commotion over by the elephant's enclosure, so he went to investigate. The elephants had obviously been disturbed and three boys stood by looking suspicious. Okay, said the zookeeper, what's been going on here? He pointed to one of the boys and asked, what's your name and what were you up to? My name's John, he said, and I wasn't doing anything, just feeding peanuts to the elephants. He pointed to the second boy and and you, he said, what's your name and what were you up to? My name's Paul, he replied, and all I was doing was feeding peanuts to the elephants. He pointed to the third boy and asked, and what's your name? He said, my name's Peter, but my friends call me Peanuts. Do you have friends like that? Well, with friends like that, who needs enemies? But just remember that God is working in your friends and your brothers and sisters in Christ, just as he is working in you. This is Set Free with Ken Legg. Hello, Phil here, and welcome to the program. Thank you for joining us. This week, Ken and I are looking at the story of Joseph, in particular, his dreams. And it's uh, quite an appropriate introduction to today's program, Ken, because I understand you're going to talk about Joseph's brothers today. I wonder if they called him Peanuts. (laughs) Um, uh, The way they treated him, of course, you wouldn't think they were his brothers, more like his enemies. They, They hated him. They sold him into slavery uh, provoked by their far- father's favoritism towards Joseph. It wasn't a pretty picture. No, that's right, Phil. But, of course, you know, where we're at now, of course, in, in our story this week, uh, a lot of water has passed under the bridge, and uh, he's now the prime minister of Egypt, and uh, there's a worldwide famine, and only Egypt could supply food to the other nations. And so Joseph's brothers had to go to Egypt to get food, not knowing, of course, that mm. he's the man they'd have to go through. Yeah. Um, anyone from a foreign land who wanted to buy grain would have to go and see Joseph first. And so the ten brothers appear before him. He recognized them, but they didn't recognize him. He he treated them harshly, accusing them of lying and of being spies. And they told him of their family, including Benjamin and Jacob. But were they telling the truth? Had they killed Benjamin just as they tried to kill him because, mm. you know, Benjamin had now become the new favorite. So Joseph keeps Simeon in prison as hostage while they return home to bring Benjamin back to prove that they weren't telling lies. And along the way, they open their sacks to get grain for their donkeys, and they they find their money there. So Jacob accused the nine sons of being responsible for the loss of the two sons, that's Joseph and now Simeon, and now for causing the loss of Benjamin too. Uh, Furthermore, if they did eventually return to Egypt, well, it's possible they would all be accused of stealing and end up in prison. Wasn't what a, a pretty mess. picture, was it? No. What a mess. Uh, so where does that leave them then? They're, they're kind of between a rock and a hard place, I guess. Uh, Jacob wouldn't let them take Benjamin to Egypt. Simeon couldn't be freed from prison until they did. Eventually they're going to run out of food, so what do they do? Yeah, well, that's exactly what happened. They ran out of food, and in the end, Jacob reluctantly let them go. Otherwise, they would have just starved to death. Now, the last time, remember, that Joseph saw Benjamin was 20 years old. Previous and and he was just a little child and Benjamin was just a little child yeah and so it was like seeing him if you like for the first time. Um, remember also that he was Joseph's full brother. The others were half brothers, but Benjamin was his only full brother. Uh, but jo- Jacob had spoiled him just as he spoiled Joseph. So here's the question that was going through Joseph's mind: Would they have treated Benjamin the same way they treated Joseph, who was the favourite back then? Yeah. Well, he invited them back to his house for a meal. And uh, that must have been strange to them because of the way that he treated them, the harshness and so on. Yeah. He brings out Simeon, who rejoins them. And this is interesting. When Joseph sits them down, he sits them down in the order of their age. Now, they didn't know that he knew, you know, who yeah, was the oldest, the next one. That's right. Somebody's would worked out the mathematics on that field. They say there's actually 39 million different options of seating when you've got 12 people. <laughs> really? It's 39 million. But he's, he sets them out in the order of their age, and they're probably thinking, what on earth is going on here? And then, of course, Benjamin receives five times as much as uh, the others. So what are they going to do? You know, How are they going to react to this kind of favoritism again? Are they going to show resentment towards Benjamin and not knowing that he can understand what they're saying? So the whole thing, he's testing them. But so far, so good, isn't it? Uh, they passed the test, so to speak, that they didn't seem to have any resentment there? Yeah, that's right. But uh, one more test is needed, Phil. And, and um, 
they get their grain, they head back home, uh, they rest along the way to give some you know food to their donkeys or their, their their animals, and they discover all their money's in the sacks. And not only that, but Joseph's cup is there. Mm. And so Pharaoh's stewards catch up with them, take them all back to Egypt, and they're accused. You know, he's saying, "Hey, I treated you kindly. Well, how comes you've re- responded with such ingratitude for that?" You know, and uh, then he says, "Okay, the one who's got my cup." That is the one who I will now keep, and uh, that one will be punished. And of course, it's Benjamin. Yeah, they must have been devastated, really, because they must have wondered what on earth was going on. Yeah, but that's where this test comes in, because see, they've got a perfect opportunity now to get out of trouble, get themselves off the hook, and go home. Just leave Benjamin there. So, if they were no different to back in the days when they, you know, wanted him killed, yeah, that's what they would have done. And this is what the test is about. But see, they all stood with with Benjamin. Uh, in other words, they've changed. Something's gone on in their lives. And this is what this test was all about. Um, what a joy it must have been for Joseph, Phil, to, to see all of them returning and, and to see even Judah saying, look, please take me hostage, not not Benjamin. Yeah. There's something gone on with these guys. You know, they're not thinking about themselves. now. They're, they're looking out for one another, taking care of one another, and even taking care of the favourite. I, I wonder how long Joseph could actually have kept that up, you know, just kept the game going. Yeah, well, of course, that's when he revealed his true identity. He couldn't hold back anymore. And, uh, but he needed to know that they were really sorry for what they had done and that they had changed. So um, he can't restrain himself anymore. He says, okay, everyone, out. And then he reveals himself to, to his brothers. And, of course, they not only are shocked, but now they're afraid. This is the most powerful man in the world. Yeah, what's he going to do? He can cut their heads off. You know, he can do anything. Yeah. Uh, he's got that power to do that. But this is what he says. Let me read it to you from Genesis 45 and verse 5. He says, but now don't, don't be grieved or don't be angry with yourselves because you sold me here. He said, for God sent me here before you to preserve life. And God sent me before you to preserve a posterity for you in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. He, see, he had seen the hand of God in this. It was a difficult time for all of them as a family, but somehow he was able to get God's perspective, heaven's perspective, if you like, Phil, on that. Can you imagine how they would have felt at that point when they're standing there and he's turned from, you know, I could chop your heads off here, but that's what they're expecting he's going to say. But yeah. he actually says, no, this is actually God. God is in all of this. And I can only imagine the feeling that they would have had and how their gratefulness to God would yeah. have kicked in, you know? Yeah, and I think also they're getting a revelation of, wow, you know, we were actually playing out a drama, not not in a fatalistic way, you know, because it was still their choices. God God makes all things work together for good. Yeah. So he used the choices, but to fulfill his greater plan. But they must have thought, well, yeah, God is sovereign in all this, and God has, you know, preserved our brother and now has lifted him up to this incredible position of favor. Yeah. Uh, he's such an important man now, and, and yet it was to preserve us. The nation of Israel, we would have perished if there was no food. We would have starved to death. And uh, and yet this man who's gone through so much, Joseph, has been instrumental in the, in the hands of God. It's quite an incredible story. And there's lots of things that we can pick out of this. What would you say is the main thing we can learn out of this? Well, look, I don't think that Joseph is any different to any one of us. I think he's there in the Bible to show us that there's a lot of bad stuff happening around us. There's a lot of suffering that we go through in life. There's a lot of things that even happen within our families that we wish didn't happen, you know. Yeah. But God can make all things work together for good. In fact, the Bible says this, that for every believer, to those that love God, this is what Paul says, he makes all things work together for good. He's got a grand purpose, and we don't always see that purpose. We just get bogged down with the stuff that's happening in our lives. But we need to get a vision here for the sovereignty of God, the fact that Okay, some bad things might happen. God hasn't caused those things, but he will take them up and actually turn them around and make them work to our advantage. Turn those tragedies into triumphs, so to speak. Yeah. You know, what do we say? Uh, They didn't make Joseph a bitter person, but a better person. They weren't a stumbling stone for him, but a stepping stone into the greater purposes and plans of God. helpful and fascinating look at Joseph's dreams and how they apply to us. Do join us tomorrow as we continue this conversation. And until then, remember you don't have to carry that baggage. God wants you to be set free. For books, DVDs, small group studies and other resources from Ken Legg and details about Ken's ministry, shop online at vision.org.au. That's vision.org.au. 
Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.